remind us, God, of the promise. God, show us, God. Lord God, envision us today, God. Give us direction, God, today, God. Instruct, God. Give us blueprints, God. Oh, God, that there would be a creativeness in the house, God, to see, God. Lord God, ideas, God, and purpose, God, and plans, God, for the future, God, that you have for this church, God, for our families, for our marriages, for ministry, God, for our children, our children's children, God. I pray today, God, that we would be activated, God, into the army of the Lord, God. Let it be, God, a, a fresh anointing, a fresh fire, God. Lord God, let there be true revival, God. Not just music, God, not just dancing, God, but revival, God, where your presence, God, shows up, where there's no denying, God, that the presence of the Lord is with us, God. We give you the glory, God, and we give you the honor, and we give you the praise. In Jesus' mighty name, we all say amen. Let's give the Lord a round of applause this morning. Let's give it up for, for Frankie, our minister of music. And then uh, and let's get up for, for Louis Cruz. Come on now, hallelujah. That, that name just, it just sounds professional, Louis. Louis Cruz, all the way from. <laughs> we appreciate you for joining us, man. It's a pleasure to have you. Let's give it up for Louis Cruz one time. You guys sound great together, by the way. Awesome job, you guys. Amen. You may be seated. Um, today is the, the last day of our 21-day fast. And today, again, we're pr praying for promises. And we all have promises. There's been promises spoken over this city. There's been promises spoken over your lives. There's been promises spoken into the atmosphere. It's been seeded into the atmosphere. And um, I pray today that, that those seeds would begin to, to sprout and bring forth a fruit. Amen. And if you're uh, taking notes today, we're, we're going to end today a little different. I know the seeding's a little different. We were... Here, I think yesterday from 8 in the morning to about 5 p.m. And we were just too tired to move the chairs around. So I said, <laughs> leave the chairs as they are. We'll figure it out this week. Praise God. The guys were like, let my people go. <laughs> and we let them go. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so excuse the chairs. It was a beautiful day. Um, the church, I just want to... Uh, Thank the church. If I could speak on behalf of the, the Martinez family, um, la familia de los Martinez, le, le doy gracias a ellos por el honor a tener el servicio aquí para, para Ray, Chaplain Ray, de, 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 de mi corazón, te doy gracias a ustedes. Era un buen hombre y te, te, los amos a, a todos los familia. familia. Um, I want to say this on behalf of Victory Outreach Church in Modesto, everybody that participated, everybody that, that's given to help the family financially, everybody that came and, and worked hard from setting up chairs to sweeping to cooking to serving um, for their prayers, um, everything you did, I, I just want to thank you on behalf of the family. Thank you uh, for everybody that partnered. Um, and we sent, we sent Chaplain home, Chaplain Ray home uh, with, it was, it was powerful. It, it was probably one of the most uh, powerful funeral or celebration of life services that, that I've ever been to. Um, the people ministered. It, it was heavy. It was, we had church yesterday. We really had church. And, and I, I really thank you, church, once again. You guys put, uh, people that came, whatever whatever preconceived notion they had about our church amen. amen you guys represented the lord first and you represented well for our church so give you guys 
a hand of, of applause. Uh, thank you. We have the best church in Victory Outreach. We have the best church in Modesto, Stanislaus County, in the Valley, in Northern, in the United States. Come on. <laughs> Hey, man, it's the best to me. You guys are the best to me. I, I think that. I love you guys so much. Um, today, I'm going to speak on Joshua, and I've titled the message, Where Are the Warriors? Amen. Where are the warriors at? See, God has called you today. Amen. And uh, I'm going to open up in Joshua chapter 3, verses 9. And I love this portion of scripture. Because there's a changing of the guard taking place. It, it, it's so powerful because Joshua is now stepping into his calling. He's stepping into the, the promises that God had for the Israelite people, the Hebrew people. He's stepping into a, 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 new, um, a new anointing over his life, a new calling, a new direction. And uh, it says in Joshua chapter 3, if you have your Bibles, you could turn to Joshua chapter 3, verse 9. And it says this, And Joshua said to the people of Israel, Come, tell your neighbor, come. come. Hear and listen. Come here and listen to the words of the Lord your God. Lord God, in the mighty name of Jesus, I just pray, God, that you would, Lord God, call my nurse. Use me as a vessel to the, deliver this message, God, that it would just stir up your people to live, live for you, God, and just glorify you in everything we do. In Jesus' name, amen. This is a, a powerful book, you guys. It's on, uh, it describes the Israelites, just, they're being, they've been delivered already. Under Moses, God sent them a deliverer. They had been in captivity for, for years, so many years that the Bible says, that they had already forgot about Jacob and Joseph there in the land of Egypt. They forgot who brought the Israelite people there. They were under bondage. They were under, they were slaves. They were, they were be, being driven, killed, murdered, and used, basically. Come on, how many of you guys have felt, felt used? How many of you guys know that the enemy comes to kill, steal, and destroy? And your family has felt like used, and man, things have come against you. Things have hurt. Well, this is a, a story of victory. And in the book, it shows the promises of God coming to pass there for the Israelite people. And I love how the book focuses not just on the people, but it focuses on the commander and chief. Amen? It focuses on God. It focuses on the power of God, the move of God, the promise of God, how God is true to his word, how he's the same yesterday, today, and forever. It talks about the commander being the Lord. And here Joshua's telling the people, come and hear. Come and hear. I'm not giving you direction. I'm not telling you what to do. But I've been given special instructions and insight from the Lord and come and hear from the Lord God. It's time to take our promises and move into the territory that God has called us to move into. He says, come and hear the words of the Lord, our God. Not my God, but your God. People of Modesto, this is our time to inherit the promises of God. And he's rallying up the troops. I love it. Don't you love when, when you get rallied up, when you're all downtrodden, and man, you're like, God, I know you promised me, God. Or you might even have forgotten what God promised you, what has been spoken over your life, what promise was, was by the anointed man of God, whoever it was, gave you a promise. And sometimes you can go through life, and grow weary and wonder, God, or you could be, but then something happens. God shows up and revival takes place because God is there in the midst and you're reminded. It's an amazing feeling. And that's what I believe God was using Joseph to, jo uh, Joshua to do. See, the people had been under captivity. They had been delivered. 
They've seen great miracles. They've seen the, the power and the anointing of God move on their behalf. They've seen plagues take place in Egypt and how God changed Pharaoh's heart for a second and Pharaoh said, go and, and leave. And then Pharaoh comes back and, and takes back his, his, his release and he goes after him, chases him down. And he's running and he's chasing. And then God opens up, the Bible says, the Red Sea. And what's so amazing is not only did God deliver him or God made a way of escape, but it says that God used those people to bless them. They gave them goods and gold and finances and said, I, I, I don't know who your God is. But there's something taking place here in the land of Egypt. And man, there is a curse on this land. We're blessing you. Just get out. People of God, move on. And they were blessed. See, God was doing something great in their midst. And I can imagine Joshua. Joshua is one, one of the 12 spies. He was the, one of the ones that were there in Egypt. He witnessed all this. He seen the hand of God move. He knew that God had done great things. He believed. The Bible says that he was of a different spirit along with Caleb. He, he knew that the God was real. He knew that God was able. He believed. See, is there a people like that that still believe? Do you still believe that God is able? Have you seen miracles? Sometimes we just need people to remind us that there is still a miracle working God. That there is still a God that can heal from cancer. There is still a God that can open up blind eyes. There is still a God that can restore marriages and touch our children. See, Joshua believed. He believed. See, week in and week out, there has been a charge going out from this pulpit. There has been a charge to take our city for the honor and the glory of God, to preach the gospel, to share the message of hope, to be a light, to put on your spiritual armor. That's why we wake up in the morning and we have a Zoom prayer. It would be easier just to get in there and start praying. But no, me and Fernando and some of the, the rest of you that get on, we get in there. We type in those little numbers. We're trying to put our mute button on and camera on. And we're trying to get our coffee in. And we're trying to seek the Lord. But we're rounding up the troops. Because we want to see. God give you direction, and we're there, repenting right there, looking in the mirror and saying, God, forgive me for my sin. God, change my mentality, change my heart. God, place, Lord God, that helmet of, of salvation and righteousness and truth, God, the word of God, the shield of faith, the preparation of the gospel. We're armoring up, and we're building an army for God. Where are the warriors at? Are you ready to go to war and go into prayer? I want to see my son saved, my daughter saved. I want to see God move in this city like never before. See, and Joshua is taking a charge. He knew the promises. Because we, we get together because we want to see God's promise and the prophetic word for this church come to pass. I want to see this church be a base. What does that mean, Pastor Justin? I want to see God use your life. I want to see God use your family's life. I want to see God use your children. Where people from all over the world will come to Modesto, to Victory Outreach Church of Modesto, to get trained and equipped and learn how to go to war, amen, to do ministry. We will be a base. What's it going to be? For them to learn how to run a powerful children's ministry and raise up children that are going to worship the Lord, that know scripture, that at the age of five, six years old are already at the altar preaching the word of God, hitting the streets, telling people about the ABCs to admit, believe, and confess Jesus as their Lord and Savior. Will we be a base for worship where we have a powerful worship team led by Frankie and other ministers of the gospel? Amen. Ramon teaching people how to do percussion up there and how to ring those little bells. Hallelujah. Will we be a base to teach people how to evangelize? 
how to run team ministry, how to preach and teach and equip. We will become a, I want to see every promise for this church. I'm willing to lay my life down and believe. But where are the warriors? Where are the people that are praying and believing and standing on those promises that are willing to deny the flesh and fast till we see breakthrough? See, I feel challenged. Today's the last day, 21 days. But I, there's two people, and myself included, three of us, that said we need to keep going. I don't care that we're going to end. I want to keep going. I want to be like that persistent widow. God, show me. Grant me victory, God, over my adversary, God. I'm going to keep knocking at the door to see every promise come to pass. Are we still willing? Joshua knew that there was a promise for his people, and it was his time, their time, to step out. And he's sitting there at the edge of the Jordan River getting ready to cross and take Jericho. See, when you study the word of God, they, they had tremendous victories. See, but what's, when they were in Egypt, they weren't warriors. When they were in Egypt, they were slaves. They didn't go to war. They weren't in battle. They were in slavery. And when they, when they went on that journey through the wilderness for 40 years, seeing giants in the land, and I can imagine, man, these guys are beasts. Come on, in today's terms, they're swole. <laughs> Hallelujah. They're big. They're humongous, humongous. Their cities are built up and fortified. Here we are living in tents. We're slain. We don't know how to go to war. And it must have been a little intimidating. But there was a couple of spies. There was a couple of spies that knew the promises of Abraham, that knew the promises of Isaac, they knew the promises of Jacob, and they're in captivity. They believed that one day God would send a deliverer. And when they were there in that wilderness, there was still a, a remnant of people that believed. Lo vieron con sus ojos. They seen it with their eyes. Y agarraron los uvas. They grabbed the grapes. Hallelujah. The Bible says they were big grapes. And I could imagine if Fernando was up here and we grabbed, man, Fernando, look at these big grapes. Hallelujah. One grape can feed the whole men's home. Hallelujah. And it must have looked amazing. But Moses, the rest of them were like grasshoppers. Hallelujah. They had a grasshopper mentality. They didn't know who God was in their life. They didn't know that we serve the all-powerful, mighty God that is able. See, when you begin to see and you begin to, to pray on the promises and the big, how many of you guys want the big, I want the big grapes, hallelujah. You want the big grapes, Jesus? Keep coming to church, hallelujah. <laughs> pray for it. He's sitting there. Knowing, see, see, it was in those times that they began to go to war and they began to get equipped and they began to believe and they began to get small victories. And when you study the Bible, when Joshua started going into the territory, I'm way off my notes, so I'm going to preach it today. Hallelujah. He started going into territories and it says they didn't go and just go, man, let's round up everybody all at once. No, God gave them victories. He showed them how to ambush. He showed them how to take the land. And little by little, they started taking territory. They believed in the promises. There were cities already set up for them. They didn't destroy the cities. They took over. And I'm here to tell you, the same way God was with Moses, Joshua, he will be with you. The same way God has been with this ministry since 1967, he will be with us and he will give us victory. 
Church of Modesto, we've been called to take this city for the honor and glory of God. We've been called to see our children rise up and do the best for God, to be the best, so they will no longer live the way we lived. See, Joshua had seen. He was born a slave. He witnessed the oppression. He was there and experienced it firsthand. He was a slave. How many of you guys have been slaves? Some of you, and I hate to say it, might still have a little bit of slave mentality. And I don't say that to offend you. I say that to challenge you, to reflect, to reflect on the conversations that you might have. The conversations that you might even have in your mind. The way you perceive things. The way you allow things to enter into your mind through the filter and perception of a slave. Because not all of us grew up. I'm going to talk about me. Or I'll talk about the church down the street because it's not here, huh? I, I didn't have a family that said, hey, Justin, you can become someone great. Hey, Justin, let me, let me teach you. Let me disciple you and equip you to be the best version and reach your maximum and full potential. I didn't have a family that, that envisioned me. As a matter of fact, I seen things from a whole different perspective or perception. See, my dad was, was a drug addict. He was an alcoholic. He functioned, went to work, had a second grade education, couldn't read, couldn't write, but he worked hard. Did his best to, to provide, but man, in so many ways, he was one of the smartest persons that I knew. I, I, I wish I could still call him sometimes and ask him, Dad, I need your help in this area. But I also seen the ugliness, a womanizer, drinking every day, abusive, controlling. Hustling, drug dealing. And I remember as a kid, all this anger that was in my life. I used to say, man, I, I hate my dad for what he does. I hate it. And, you know, when I, when I was in high school, he went to prison. He caught a case. Caught a case in prison, went from San Quentin to, to Pelican Bay, and uh, he did over 10 years in prison. And as a kid, I always said, I will never drink. I'm going to buy my mom a house. I'm going <laughs> to marry somebody when I'm 35 years old. Hallelujah. And I like, I, I'm a little competitive, so I like winning. So I beat that by 20 years. <laughs> Had a kid when I was 15. Hallelujah. But everything that I said I would not become, there was a curse, a generational curse on my family. And I had that slave mentality. And I became an alcoholic. And I became a person that smoked weed every day single day, every moment that I, that I could find it or get it or do it, I was there. And I was a slave to that. I, I used to thirst, like literally thirst for it. I don't care how much I was around Angelina or she would keep me out or we'd be shopping and then she would do it on purpose, hallelujah. Okay, we need to go look for napkins, hallelujah. What kind of napkins? I don't know. We'll find them, you know, four hours later. We're looking for napkins still. Just kidding. 
just kidding about that part, but she would keep me out. And I was such a slave that no matter what time it was, I'd still go to the liquor store. And I was so bound. See, Joshua seen it from a different eyes. And it could have easily affected his perception of who God was, is, and what God was able to do. See, he believed when others didn't. When others thought and would settle for, for scraps from the slave master's table, he knew that God was their source. That God would provide manna from heaven. That by the striking of the rock, water would bring, be, there would be made provision for the people. He knew that no matter what, every promise of God would come to pass as long as they believed and they were willing to step out. See, those years in, in captivity and those years in the wilderness, it didn't take away the fact that God still had a promise for the people. See, this church has been through a lot of things. I went through a lot of things. You've been through a lot of things. And there are times that we go through those struggles and we begin to lose focus and sight of the promise that God has for our lives. It could seem like it's surreal. It's a dream. Maybe that was for yesterday. But I'm here to tell you that the same way God was with Moses, the same way God was with Joshua, God is with us. His promises are true. If we're able to walk this walk of faith and keep believing, God has still called you to take cities. God has still called you to go to the UTC. God has still called you to raise up men that would give God honor and glory. God has still called you to be a deliverer in the land of Modesto, in Ceres, in Riverbank, and the surrounding cities. Hallelujah. We're called to bring hope to the valley. He's standing there in, at the edge. Come and hear the words of the Lord your God. You've been sitting for, here in these services, and people are telling you that God is able. God's worked a miracle. We gave, and God gave me a job back. As a matter of fact, God qualified the unqualified, and I'm doing great things today. People have been qualified. But are you willing to lay it down? Where are my warriors at? We've been given promises. Isaiah 45, verse 2 and 3. Yeah. I will go before you, make the crooked places straight. I will break into the pieces the gates of bronze and cut the bars of iron. I will give you treasures of darkness, hidden riches and secret places, so that you may know I, the Lord, will call you by your name and, and the God of Israel. That's a promise for our ministry. It's a word in Isaiah spiritual treasure God gave him treasure in that time God will provide we see it as you're the treasure you're the hidden riches in secret places God goes before us he makes the crooked path straight he breaks down the bars of iron the gates of bronze God is the one that sets free. He's the one that goes before us. He's the commander in chief of this ministry. Don't get it twisted. We preach vision. Yes, we do, but it's a God-given vision to preach the word of God and set captives free. See, there's so many more treasures in this city. You can walk to the corner. You'll see people on the street corner, amen, that the, their mind has been taken from them. And they're yelling. Man, Pastor Ed would, would say over the pulpit, the enemy wants to see you on the street corner barefooted. They're out there. But I serve a God. That I don't care if a doctor has legally declared you 5150. I've seen people delivered and transformed. We have some in the house. 5150, and today they're crazy for Jesus. God has given us promise, promises to see our family saved, 
The Bible says in Joshua 24, 15, as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Hallelujah. I don't care if my kids are coming. I smell weed in their room, and I might yell at them, but as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. Oh, my son didn't come home last night, but as for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. My son was called to be a youth minister, a pastor, an evangelist. Hallelujah. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord. I've heard stories where people are on their bed all messed up. And they say, hey, pastor so-and-so, we got to start speaking to our children like that again. Hey, evangelist Justin Jr., get up. Hey, pastor Justin Jr., hey, (laughs) we got to start speaking some faith. The Bible says to pray all kinds of prayers. I'm, I, we need to start praying some crazy prayers, unbelievable prayers, prayers of impossibilities, but we serve a God of the, pos- the impossible that makes the impossible possible. Crazy prayers. Hallelujah, God, I want to see. Uh, uh, give us a mega church, God. And somehow, some way, if we're going to lease it, God, let it be a dollar a year. Hallelujah. So that we can do great things for this city. Do radical, radical outreaches and events and dramas and plays and movies. Come on. Record our own music. Have rappers and ministers worship music. Come on. The sky is a mad country music. Come on. Come on. Book writers. We got to start talking crazy. But do you believe it? We serve the God of the big grapes. I want the big grapes. Where are my warriors at? We got to start praying like never before. See, Joshua knew where the promises came from. He knew it was the word of God. That's why he says, come and hear the words of the Lord your God. We believe that out of this pulpit, prophetic words are are being sprinkled. I, I might not be a farmer, but in the spirit, I'm sprinkling seeds into the atmosphere. And it's for you. We could do such great things in this city. It would be amazing. Amen. That, that celebration of life service yesterday was powerful. Amen. I don't know what life chaplain Ray lived before we met him. Before he became a chaplain. I don't know what life he, he lived. Some say that he, his family said that he had some regrets. But even Yarmani, she would encourage him. She would tell him, God's forgiven you. You're a mighty man of God. You got disciples to preach to, to lift up and to encourage. And yesterday, that, that, that service was so powerful that his life spoke out the gospel of hope to people. If there was people in that service yesterday that did not know how powerful God had moved in his life, yesterday was a demonstration of the power of God and what God can do for an individual that believes. See, that's why we're seeding the atmosphere. Because we want to see God spark something in your life. If you would just believe, if you would just allow God to touch your heart and change your mentality, amen, and begin to love again and let people into your life so that you can become the best version of yourself. Joshua and the people of Israel were on the brink of moving into miracle territory to inherit the promises of God. Today, I want to tell you, Victory Outreach Church of Modesto, that you have such a great inheritance waiting for you if you just step out. We need to understand that the promises come from God. If God is for us, one of you knows that. If God is for us, If God is for us, man, some of you need to remind yourself, if God be for me, who can be against me, God? I can't find a job, but if God be for me, who can be against me? God, I have no means right now. I'm stepping out. I'm putting in uh, applications. I'm on the road. I'm going to service, uh, uh, um, what do they call them? 
job search services, what do they call them? <laughs> job fairs. One, hallelujah. Number two, we got another one. Oh, no. <laughs> job, Fernando must know about job fairs. Hallelujah. <laughs> And if you keep searching and you keep stepping out, no matter what, God is your provider. God, as a matter of fact, that word, Jehovah, he's, he is provision enough, God. I've learned to be content with much, God. I've learned to be content without. But as long as I have you, God, I know that I can make it. We understand when the enemy comes in like a flood, God, you raise up a standard. See, what testimonies have you heard? Not only in this pulpit, but we've heard of our founder, Pastor Sonny Argonzoni. He, man, with all due respect, I love Pastor Sonny. I, I've gotten to know him in a, in a personal way. Amen. I don't think all these years that I've been around him, even in San Jose when he was pastoring, I, I think he only said my name right two times, Justin. <laughs> But I know him, and wherever I see him, wherever I go, he brightens up with a smile and says, hey, Smiley, there he is, Smiley. <laughs> but he was a heroin addict with no hope and no future. But God radically changed his life through a testimony from Nikki Cruz and David Wilkerson. And what that shows me is that we have a testimony to share. We are on the verge of inheriting every promise for this city and this church. But it's not going to come from Pastor Justin or Sister Angelina. It's not going to come from Fernando. It's not going to come from Moses and Angel, Gabriel and Lydia, John and, and the Suarez family, and Crystal and Roxanne or Frankie or the rest of the leaders in this church. We run as a team, but we know the coach is Jesus. And I'm here to tell you, the only way we're going to inherit every promise is for you to be activated into the army of God and begin to seek God in prayer. Begin to grow and expand your mind and capacity. Because we're called to do it together. One can send a thousand, two, ten thousand, or five thousand, the Bible says. Can you imagine? There's about 100 people in this place. You do the math. We are in the tens of thousands in the supernatural. If we can come together, we can affect this city with the gospel. Not, not just where we would see souls saved, and that's the number one goal. But we can change the whole culture of this city. The Bible says in the book of Acts that people begin to burn their idols and take their sorcery, witchcraft books, and put them in the fire because there was a greater power, a true power that came from, the, from God. Your testimony, where are my warriors at? Joshua knew that the prom where the promises came from, and it was time to advance. Come on. Hallelujah. What about Victory Outreach? Are we going to take our city? Are you going to take your city? Are you ready to inherit your promises? I don't want to grow old and look back and wonder what if. What if, God, I would have stepped out? What if, God, if I would have just tried this? God, when you showed me this vision, what, what if I would have just put a little bit of teeth to it, a little, little, little action to it, God, if I would have just shared the vision with a couple of other people and said, hey, this could help our church. Hey, this could do you. Look, God showed me this for you. If we can, I'm going to start praying. As a matter of fact, I'll help you. God gave me the blueprints. Here, take it. I want to see the full potential for your life. Be activated. See, there's apostles, prophets, pastors, teachers, and evangelists in this church. There's giftings that I don't have that some of you don't have, but maybe the other side has those giftings. But together, we can be such a great army for God where we can change a whole generation. 
See, it's time to advance. It's time to rise up. It's no more, man, aren't you tired of seeing your children being taken away from the enemy? Aren't you tired of, of the enemy influencing your children and telling them this is what's right and this is what's wrong with you? When God made them fearfully and wonderfully made, they were hand-knit by God, a God that don't make mistakes. I'm ready. See, Joshua sat under great leadership. Moses spent so much time that he had to wear, with the Lord, that he had to wear a veil. Come on, how many of you are spending time with the Lord? See, I, I feel challenged in that area. I want, I want to fast, not only so my suits can button again. Praise <laughs> the Lord. They button again. You guys, you guys, I don't know. You guys, this is victory for me. Hallelujah. <laughs> That's the benefits of spending time with the Lord. But man, we, I don't want to be a person just with a title and, and an authority in, in the sense of a title. I want to have spiritual authority where it's the words of God, the, the atmosphere, because I carry the presence of God. Don't you want to be able to carry God's presence so deep that out of your belly, the Bible says, would flow rivers of living water? See, what does that mean? Rivers of living water. What is it? The word of God. What does that mean? Man, okay, Kobe's going to be out there and water. <laughs> His bag, water bag broke. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> just kidding, Kobe. <laughs> but it's atmosphere. Everywhere we go, every family party. Man, hey, Moses, you want a drink? No, you got some water? Let me, the, the Bible says there's a water that will never let you thirst again. Let me tell you what God did in my life. I know you knew me as an alcoholic before. As a matter of fact, the last time you see me, I might have blacked out. But I'm here to tell you that there is a light in me today, amen, that I'm going to let shine bright. Hallelujah. Atmosphere shifters. That, man, you might go and see somebody that seems so happy and excited, but there's something taking place in their heart. But you carry that river of living water. See, he sat under great, great leadership, and we need to spend time with God, prayer, fasting, and reading of the word. Modesto, Victory Outreach Modesto, we have some great examples in faith. Our pastors, our ministers, our leadership. Our elders, our forefathers, I've, I've had the privilege and honor to sit under some great men of God. I was under Pastor Ed for a season. I love, I don't share all that so much here because I don't believe in, and I don't have to show a resume. I don't have to show a resume. But I've had the honor and privilege of being under some great leadership that stepped out and did movies. That took dramas that, that affected a whole generation that people are still watching today. Movies and wrote books and, and books on leadership. And he had such a great anointing of God on his life. But he spent time in prayer. It was him that showed me how to pray. It was him that brought me to his house and sat down and said, Justin, this is how you put together a message. It was him that brought me in and showed me how to evangelize and challenged me to be a leader that believed in me when I didn't even believe in myself. But it was because I was vulnerable and I placed myself and I was, I was just there everywhere. I made myself available. And then Pastor Sonny comes. Later on, Pastor Ed goes home to be with the Lord. Pastor Sonny comes. And we're in a dead church. It was a dead church. One of the biggest churches in, Cal in Northern California, and we were a dead church. And every week he's saying, how many new people are in the, how many visitors do we have? How many people, this is their second or third time? How many people haven't been here for a long time? Raise up your hand. And it was just like this. Quiet. For weeks and months. I said, man, we need some life in this church. And they began to pray. And they began to say, who were the ones? Where are the evangelists? Where are the potentials? Where 
are the people that, that have promises, that believe, that, that still remember that there were big grapes in the land. And they challenged us to go out. And me and my wife, we went out there and it, we were dead. Maybe I, if I was. I don't know about her. She's a prayer warrior. <laughs> but I was dead in so many ways. And when that challenge came out to go and, and we need you guys to look for buildings. We want you guys to go to the surrounding cities. We want you guys to, to start up victory centers and, and go out in the midweek and start something and start bringing people to church. Man, we believed it. It stirred up something in us again. And we started going door to door. We started knocking on people's door. We started getting pickup trucks with speakers and started telling people, that there is a God in the land that changed my life. And I'm here to tell you that I was an alcoholic, but I've been delivered by the blood of the Lamb. Hallelujah. I'm a living testimony of God's miracle working power. And people begin to come out of their houses. And we begin to invite them to the Victory Center. And then we bought that maroon van that it's outside that we prayed for. And we started loading it up with people and bringing them to church. And little did we know that we would be in Modesto packing that van out with disciples for the Lord. Those speakers that we bought, we're still using them on the street corner because we believed. And then we have Pastor Tim there in San Jose, radical, local for the Lord. Hallelujah, Pastor Tim. I love Pastor Tim. Hallelujah. But he believes. See, as we continue to invade Modesto, whose word and promise will we stand on? Whose word are the people we reach going to hear? See, Joshua knew. That it was the words of the Lord, your God. And I think I'm going to close right there, you guys. Where are the mighty men and women of valor at? Where are the prayer warriors? Where are the people that are going to believe, that are going to fast? So breakthrough takes place to our children start to get delivered. Because I know there's children that Moses wants to see saved, that Angel wants to see saved. I got children that I want to see saved. Fernando has nieces and nephews that he needs to see saved. Kobe, amen, John, hallelujah. Everybody here, I could name you. And they belong here. They belong in this church. They have a calling and anointing that could do, man, such great things. But where are my warriors at? The call goes out over this pulpit week in and week out, and it's a challenge to believe God. If you would only step out, if my people, the Bible says, would only humble themselves and pray, hallelujah, there would be healing in the land. There's healing in, in my children, my land that needs to take place. I want to see my son and daughter do everything, become everything. I still want to see and I still believe that God's going to open up blind eyes in this church. That God is going to pick people up out of the wheelchair. That we're going to hear people that have cancer and AIDS and Man, they came into a church service and the big grapes exploded right before their eyes. They confessed the Lord and got their healing. Yeah. Hallelujah. I'm going to try to transition now because we wanted to do something a little different. But I'm gonna, I want to say a quick prayer before we move on to the communion. Let's all stand. I love the book of Joshua because it starts again with a word from God. And the word from God spoken over Joshua's life was this. Be strong. Be courageous. 
And God says it several times. Be strong. Be courageous. See, sometimes it's hard to be strong. When your marriage is messed up, it seems like maybe your marriage got destroyed and it seems like you failed. Or maybe there, there's something taking place in your marriage and there's no longer communication and intimacy. And it seems like, man, God, I hear the word and, and I want to see things come to pla- pass, but it's hard to be strong. God, I see, I know that there was a promise when I dedicated my son or my daughter to the Lord, that God, that they would serve you, that they would do great things, God. But Lord God, they're running in the world. They're so, it seems so lost and impossible, and it's hard to take courage and be courageous in that. But the Bible says to Joshua, be strong and be courageous because this is the time. And I believe that that's the word for our church right now, to be strong, to be courageous. It's time to believe again, to seek God in prayer. And God, give me signs, glimpses of that promise and that hope. I've seen glimpses in the promises and the hopes in my life. And it challenged me to step out. And then I've seen glimpses in my children. And it causes, it stirs me up. God, I'm I'm praying for my sons and my daughters, God, that you would just move in their life. God, what a beautiful thing it would be, God, to see my sons and my daughters serve you together, to do ministry together. God, I want to see our marriage, God. It, I read that scripture where it says God works all things together for the good. God, I don't see any good in this marriage. I've seen mistakes. I've seen failures. God, my life has been so destroyed, God. Mistakes and failures. But your word says God works all things together for the good. Where are my warriors at? If you begin to pray, you begin to read your word, you begin to grab a hold of God, God can use your biggest defeat, your biggest issues, your biggest circumstance, your biggest problems can be the greatest weapon if you give them to God because I know a God that can work miracles your marriage your children your faith your persistence your believing that God has promises like Joshua can be a testimony for so many others see when Joshua stepped out they began to get victories they began to inherit the land and they were blessed of God because God made a way I'm here to let you know that God can make a way. Let's say this prayer. Say, Lord Jesus, I come before you. I take everything and place it in your hands. Help me to believe. Help me to trust. Help me to be vulnerable. And I put my trust in you. In Jesus' name, amen. Let's pray for a second. Actually, I'm going to share. Give me a second. Today we're going to do things a little different. We're not going to do an altar call. Today we're going to do a personal altar call where you're at. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians, it says, Therefore, maybe if if Gabriel and the men can get ready, we're going to take communion. But before we take communion, I want to read a scripture. And I want to take a self-evaluation before we partake. See, Jesus had communion with the disciples at the Last Supper. And it was a demonstration of, it was a, it signified the new covenant that was going to take place. It was a metaphor for the price, the blood, the price that was paid on the cross. And the pure offering of Jesus 
as the lamb, flesh and blood. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, 27, it says, Therefore, whoever eats of the bread or drinks of this cup of the Lord in an unworthy manner will be guilty of the body and the blood of the Lord. So it's talking about worthiness. Worthiness. Are we worthy? If I were to ask all of you here to truly reflect, we're all unworthy. We're all unworthy. It says, but let a man, a woman, examine themselves and say, so let, let them eat of the bread and drink of the cup. For he who eats and drinks in an unworthy manner eats and drinks judgment to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. Today, I want you to self-examine. We're going to pray over your mind, maybe your thought life, maybe your unbelief. Today, we're going to pray those promises to be activated. Impurities in the heart, the mind, things we've allowed into our lives, conversations. Maybe you've been in conversations and it's caused you to think a certain way towards somebody, not respect them. There's an issue in your heart. Forgiveness. Maybe you've held something against somebody. Maybe you need to ask somebody for forgiveness. Today, we got to give that to the Lord. Let's pray. Actually, before we pray, maybe uh, you can play some music. And, and Gabriel, you can... Grab the and as you guys exit to grab the cup and the bread, I want you to take some personal time just to ask for forgiveness. Oh Lord God, cleanse my mind, God, right now, God. Cleanse my heart, God. Forgive me, God, if I've allowed anything, God, to, to wander in my mind, God. If I've allowed things, God, to enter into my mind, God. Today, God, I pray, God, that you would remove them. I've allowed things, God, into my heart, God. If I've allowed my heart, God, to be impure, God, I pray for forgiveness today, God. Lord God, wash me, God. I know, God, by your stripes, God, I am healed, God. I am forgiven, God, because of what was done on the cross, God. You shed your blood, God, for me, God, my family, my children. As for me and my house, we shall serve the Lord, God. I pray, God, if I've done anything wrong to my children, God, if I've been a, an unworthy example to others, God, I pray, God, that you would forgive me, God. I thank you, God, for being the God of mercy, God, the God of grace, for loving me unconditionally, God. If I've treated people bad, God, if I've talked about people, God, Lord God, today, God, search the areas of my heart, God, and I pray for forgiveness, God. Wash me, God, with your blood, Lord. Oh, Lord God, I give you glory, God. Oh, God, purify me today, God. Let me reflect, God. Show me, God. I pray today, God, that I would be more like your son, Jesus, God. Oh, Lord God, I know, God, you don't bless a mess, God. So today I give my mess to you, God. Lord God, forgive me, God. Forgive me, God. Forgive us, God, if we've partaken in things, God, we shouldn't have partaken in, God. Lord God, if we've watched things, we shouldn't have watched, God. If we listen to things, we shouldn't have listened, God. Every root of impurity, God, I pray, God, would be uprooted right now, God, and removed, God, from our lives, God. Oh, Lord Jesus, God. Oh, Lord Jesus, God, if I've held anything against anyone, God, forgive me. Oh, God, I pray for forgiveness for our church, God. I pray for forgiveness for our city, God. I repent, God. For this city, God, city officials, God, 
our ministry, God, if it's done anything to hurt people, God, I pray, God, today for forgiveness, God. I pray today, God, we'd be more like you, Lord Jesus. Oh, Lord God, I give you glory, Lord Jesus, God. Oh, God, I praise you, Lord Jesus, God. I praise you, Lord Jesus, God. Right now, just take that self-reflection for maybe another 30 seconds. And just ask for forgiveness. Maybe you weren't the best son. Maybe you weren't the best daughter. Maybe you hurt your mother, your father. Maybe you weren't the best brother or sister or the best parent, the best friend, the best disciple. But God is so good. God is so good. All we have to do is ask for forgiveness, to repent, to turn, to make a 180, change the course of your life. Lord God, forgive us in Jesus' name. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 24, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, I am the same way. Amen. He took his life. Right now, let's partake of the bread. Thank you, Lord, for your body, God, that was broken. Scarred, God. Ripped apart. Lord God, you took the penalty of our sins, God. We thank you for your sacrifice. Hallelujah. For wherever you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's breath, the Lord's death until he comes. Let's partake. pray. Lord God, in Jesus' name, I thank you, God, for the blood that was shed, God. God, I ask for forgiveness, God, and if I put you back on the cross at times, God, I pray, God, to forgive me, God. Forgive us. Forgive this church, God. And I pray today, God, that we would live a life for you, God. And we thank you, God, your love and your mercy and your grace. The bread and the juice that we take represents the body and the blood. And it's a sacrament. It's holy. And we come together and we do this to recognize what Jesus did for our lives. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise. Hallelujah. Go ahead and worship him, man. Let's worship him. God is moving. 